these guys are going side by side, so let's not force a three wide here. Not on the first lap, any. Oh. Hello and welcome. I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm going to be trying out the Ligier JSP320 in iRacing for the first time. Unlike my recent two videos with the Toyota GR86 and the FF1600, this Ligier is not free content, meaning you're going to have to spend just over 12 US dollars to get behind the wheel in iRacing, but honestly, I think it's really worth it, especially if you like a bit of a challenge. Before actually driving the Ligier, I was kind of expecting to like it anyway. I've always been a fan of cars with downforce, you know, single-seaters, prototypes, that kind of thing, with lap times quite similar to the GT3s but with more high-speed grip and less low-speed grip. It seemed very similar, theoretically at least, to the Praga R1 in Race Room, which I've been driving all year as part of my hosted Bin Car Community Championship. So heading out on track for my first laps, I had a good idea of what to expect. What I didn't expect though was that sound. The other thing that struck me straight away was how heavy the force feedback was. Running my usual settings, the wheel in the Ligier needs a lot more force through the arms to move, even in the slow speed stuff when the aero isn't pushing the car down into the tarmac. That's not to say it feels bad, but it's definitely not consistent with the other cars I've driven eye racing recently, so it might be worth using a custom control set and knocking the overall strength down just a little bit. Or maybe don't, and use your eye racing subscription to double up as a gym membership. <laughs> just don't skip leg day. Anyway, how does the Ligier P320 actually drive? Well, on first impressions, it seems like a relatively easy car. The corners are no problem thanks to the downforce, the traction control takes care of you on acceleration, and it's actually rather planted overall. I didn't get what all the fuss was about, you know, people warned me that I was going to be in for a bit of a struggle. Then you cross the line and see that you're 5 seconds off the pace, so you think, right, I need to trust the car more, lower the TC slightly, and start to push a little bit harder, only to find out that you can't trust this thing at all. When you approach the limit of grip, the true nature of the Ligier becomes apparent, which is that it's a bit of a handful on the rear. There seems to be this constant knife edge of whether you're going to get understeer or oversteer, and I've still not quite figured out exactly why that is yet. Often I'd get to the apex and start to put the power down thinking, I'm comfortable on the exit, only to run massively wide. Other times, I'd take the same approach, but have plenty of grip to spur, so I thought, right, next time I go in, bit more confidence, only to understeer and drift wide again into the scenery. Then, when I finally thought I'd figured it out, I'd get on the brakes just a little bit too much, and the rear would start coming around, so out comes the oppo, and there's me trying to straighten it back up again and collect it. Maybe I need to induce a bit more slip angle through the mid-corner to get the car rotated, but it's tricky, as trail braking in the Ligier doesn't seem to be as effective as in other cars. It just tends to unsettle the balance. Because of the downforce, you're much better off trying to slow it down in a straight line with a heavy initial application of the brakes and then bleed it off gradually as the speed comes down with the aero becoming less effective and brakes more prone to locking, then pitching the car into the corner and rolling it through the apex before progressively putting the power down and transferring the weight back to the rear on exit. That said, braking is an area where you can find so much time, it can really make or break your lap. But without any ABS to help you out, it's so easy to lock up, especially the rears, which also kills the revs and then you're really in trouble. You can adjust the brake bias on the fly to try and find the sweet spot between front and rear locking, but I couldn't see anywhere on the steering dash where this value was shown, so without showing the black box on the car adjustments page or some kind of third party overlay with this data, you're kind of running blind. You'll definitely want to run a more rearward bias though to help get the nose into the corner, but too much and you run the risk of locking the rears. Not only will a moment like this ruin your current corner, but the next few are also going to be sketchy as well from the overheat tires. If you start sliding it round, then you just need to settle it down and wait a beat before you can go full attack again, otherwise you're going to immediately be having another, even bigger moment. In terms of getting on the power, the whopping 5.6 litre V8 Nissan engine located in the middle of the car puts out 460 horsepower through the rear wheels and has a hell of a lot of torque, so don't think that short shifting out the herpins is going to save you. It won't. With the car only weighing 950 kilos, it's quite capable of reaching nearly 300 kilometers an hour on a long enough straight with a decent slipstream of course, which is something the Ligier does benefit from quite a lot, but on the flip side you're also going to have to deal with the dirty air through the corners. It took me quite a while to get to the point where I could run consistent laps, but I definitely feel like I'm leaving a lot of time on the table. That said, 
once you get past that initial confusion and frustration of figuring out how to drive this car and smooth out those inputs, it's an incredibly rewarding driving experience which draws you in, especially with that glorious soundtrack in the background. And you can really feel the grip loss through the force feedback, which, although on the heavy side, is absolutely excellent. Not something that I ever thought I would be complimenting iRacing on, to be honest with you. Now, as you've probably noticed from the footage, this car is right-hand drive, which is definitely not standard. Coupled with that chunky A-pillar, visibility heading into right-handers, which is the majority of corners as most circuits are clockwise, can be quite poor. Although I'm kind of getting around that a bit here by using VR. It's a very small and claustrophobic cockpit, but the detail is superb, right down to the little things such as the boot up screen on the steering wheel when you first fire the car up. It's these kind of things that all add up and create a superbly immersive driving experience, which coupled with the fact I knew there was a stack more time to be found around the lap, left me wondering how soon could I get back out on track for another session. Now, normally at this point of the video, I would cut ahead and show you a race from the official servers with this car, but I'm going to do things slightly differently this time. The whole reason I'm driving this LMP3 in the first place is because I was invited by Sudspeed to take part in the hosted series, which starts, well, tomorrow as of uploading this video. Check out the link on top of the screen for the live stream right here. And what better way to prepare for the first round of the championship than a race against the AI in identical conditions. So here we are at Donington Park getting ready to start the formation lap for 10 minutes of racing against the AI. Follow the safety car in the left column. We are starting in second position. Let me just check that my TC is correct. Uh, two, yep, brake bias on 56, perfect. First time I've ever driven this car in a racing situation. Cold tyres, cold brakes, you know, you know the drill. You've done this before. Watch out for those green lights, let's react to the leader. Nice and neat, stay out of trouble. Oh. 10 minutes to go, that's 10 minutes left. Should follow your own advice. Terrible start already down to fourth. Fifth now. Nice and easy does it. On the outside here. Keep it steady. Got the power down gently. Salvage that around the outside. Good. Back up to fourth. These guys are going side by side, so let's not force a three wide here. Not on the first lap, any. Oh, oh, got on the brakes there. Wasn't expecting that. Got zero X out of that, so I think I think we're fine. Spot has not reported any damage anyway, so uh, we survived. <laughs> That's all I can ask for, really. Now, let's try and get back up to second, or maybe even better. Although, Saunders did have some epic pace and quality, so I'm not sure if I can really get that far up again. Second would be nice. So now we go down the back straight, and we're not turning right for the national layout. We are doing the Grand Prix Donington here. Ooh. A bit snaky on the rear there. And I've definitely overfueled the car. I'm using absolute default setup here. Making a move already, keep it nice and tight on the inside here. Got him. Cleared him. Back into third. Back out. It was a bit too late to switch back to the left there. Kind of already committed to the right, so... Oh, leader had a bit of a spin there. Well, not a spin, but had a wobble getting the power down. So I'm getting all kinds of snaky. Right in behind Horn. Oh, we're getting dived! We're getting dived! Still there. Clear right. It's another contact there, but that was a 4x, that one. I tried to uh, cut back in to get the swing back, but I didn't realize he'd be parking it on the apex. That was just a lack of situational awareness on, on my part, and big understeer there through the old herpin. Maybe a little bit of damage on that. Bit of a scruffy start so far. I'm still finding my feet here. But this is so much fun. This is great. I love this car. And I'm really looking forward to driving it for a full season's worth with Sudsport. <laughs> No doubt with a bit more practice and a few more races under my belt. You know, I'll get better. I seem to be able to get onto the brakes a little bit better through the chicane there. Oh, they're going defensive. On your Can't right. really try the move around the outside here. 
tried to get the over under, but didn't realize how little grip there was on the outside there. It's too uh, tentative trying to get the car turned in. Didn't want to lose the rear, so horrible off camber final corner here. Get the power down gently, gently. Back down to fourth. With only seven minutes to go in the race, it's it's ticking down that clock pretty quickly. Focus, keep it smooth, B4. That last light was at 128.44. Okay, I think everyone's settled down. We've got a nice gap behind us now. Our first real clear run at a track. Not a lap, sorry. Let's concentrate. Let's try and get a good one on the boards, put some solid times in. Catch back up again. We're not too far off, only three seconds off the leader. Over the optimist, I know. <laughs> Gently does it on the brakes, wait for the front to bite, and then get the power down. Yeah, that, that whole 50-50 oversteer, understeer thing, I've still not quite figured it out. Brake early there, I've been a bit too hot into that the last few times. I've got a good run here though, trying that move up the inside again. Hold your line. Keep it nice and tight. Still there. Clear to the left. Got him. Yeah, there's absolutely no grip on the outside there. Nice and tight again. I feel like there's so much more speed to be found, but I just don't have the confidence to unlock it yet. Okay, Dan, keep doing what you're doing. This is spot on. P3, that's the fastest lap of the race. The lap time was at 126.35. Well, it wasn't quite the fastest lap of the race because the best is a 126.1 and that was a 126.3 for me. I'm not quite sure what Spot is referring to there. Let's take that with a pinch of salt. Okay, that's good. Gained a bit of time. Back on horn through there for our second place. Five minutes to go. This is good. We'll be on the podium if we can keep it together. That's half distance. The fuel's okay. Halfway through the race already. How good does it sound? Oh. 5.6 litres of meaty goodness. Oh, mega run then. Oh, they're defending the inside. I'm going to switch it back. To the right. Already regretting it immediately because I know there's no grip out here. Right. You're clear. Let's keep it nice and tight. A bit cheeky on the apex though with the dirt. Oh, very defensive. It's a very defensive line from the AI there. Wasn't expecting that. Really blocking me off though. Did a good job of stopping me from getting the inside, but they've really hampered themselves and they're doing it again here. That lap time was 126.47. Oh, I couldn't quite get the run on the exit though. Had to back out of it. I didn't want to go into the into the rear then. But this is pretty dicey here, lift off. No point sticking our nose at the inside there. That's not going to cause anything but an airplane crash. We've already got a few of them heading over the track. The nearby airport. Don't need another one in the sky. The flying dentist. You know, I don't actually get the dentist reference, by the way. What, why are... LMP, why do people refer to the Lucier LMP3 or the drivers as dentists? I've, I've tried to Google it, but I just don't get the reference, so... There's got um, a chance here. Keep hurrying in. Someone can give me an explanation down in the comments. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be awesome. It's baffling me. Oh, they were late on the brakes there. Didn't maintain the speed. We got another run here. Oh, oh they're really going to the inside. Wow. Right. Hold your line. Give him plenty of space, get the power down. Oh, we may have made it stick. We made it stick. Okay, going in for a quiet lap now. I'm going to concentrate, really try and pull a gap and see if we can do something about that leader. I doubt it, because the gap is now up to four and a half seconds, so volume up. Here we go, enjoy the sound of the Ligier at Donington. You just done on 126.87.
with two minutes left. Two minutes. That's a perfect example of the rear, just a bit too much break on entry. And I got very loose, but it's my best lap of the race. Last lap, bring it on home. That was a 125.83. That's your best lap in this session. And the white flag is out, which means it is also the last lap of the race as well. Not really anything to gain here unless the leader makes a mistake, which I don't really see happening. We have pulled a nice gap to the car behind, so don't want to push too crazy and risk bidding that away. But 1.8, 1.9 seconds to horn behind. And then Alex Sandwich. Saunders ahead, horn behind. Definitely put way too much fuel in this car though. Like I said, I just jumped in with the default setup, I haven't made any tweaks apart from the in-car adjustments on the brake vice and the traction control. Should have really taken some fuel out because I've still got, well, 35 laps in the tank. No doubt the AI have fueled for the conditions, so maybe with a bit less fuel in the car. I could have had a fighting chance of uh, going for the lead, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's only a quick 10 minute showcase race. But I guess that's just the competitive sim racer in me trying to come out. <laughs> just wanted to win everything. You can't win them all, Dan. Going to be a perennial bridesmaid once more. Bit of understeer there, trying to get the power on, just didn't get the nose bite. And out of the final corner, that is the chequered flag, and that is P2 for my first ever race in this LMP3 Ligier. And wow, that was that was that was an awesome race. Bit scruffy at the start. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, I'm sure if that was on the official servers, I would have had some uh, rather heated comms. Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> but after the first few laps settled down, yeah, that was that was awesome fun. And yeah, once you get into the rhythm of this car, like I said, it's definitely a case of getting comfortable and then being able to just incrementally increase your lap times. You know, on cold tires, on cold brakes, when you're not really familiar with the car, you will try and push in a conventional way and you will just throw it off the circuit. You'll run wide, you'll loop it under braking, and you'll be sat there scratching your head going, how the hell do I find more time in this thing? Just slow it down. Just be smoother, be a bit more consistent. Don't fight the weight of the car. Work with the weight of the car. The time will come to you without even realizing. Every time you get in this, you'll, you'll find time. You'll improve. It's not a car that you can just peek immediately with. You will be learning this car for a while. You'll be chipping away, you'll be getting better, and then before you know it, you'll be right on the pace. But it is going to take time, it is going to take practice. But I can think of much worse cars to practice in. Two. <laughs> anyway, I hope this video gave you a little bit of an idea of what the Ligier is like to drive in iRacing. If you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, don't forget to leave it a like and share your thoughts in the comments, especially that dentist reference. I, <laughs> I still don't get it. And if you want to see more content, specifically iRacing LMP3 content, then you're in luck. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because over the course of the next 14 weeks, like I've mentioned, I will be taking part in an LMP3 hosted series. Anyway, until the next time, you look after yourselves, guys. Bye-bye.